Skeletal system, take two, or part two. How's that? All right, so what is the responsibility of the skeletal system? What does it do? Protects. It protects. What does it protect? Vital organs. Okay, so it protects. What else does it do? It gives you form, so you're not a jellyfish. Okay, it provides form. And it allows motion of the body, or body motion. Okay. One more big one. One more big one that our skeletal system is responsible for. Dashing good looks. Gives us our recognizable human form. Okay. What happens in the bone marrow, folks? Blood. Oh. Makes blood. We have creation of cells, right? Okay, so it's responsible for creating certain types of cells. or whatever you want to call it. This is what our skeletal system does. Okay? It protects us, protects organs, protects vital organs, protects our lungs, our heart, our brain. It allows for movement, gives us our form that helps us to know that we're human, and it helps to create blood cells. Our skeletal system is, it does a lot of other things too, but Those are the ones that it's mainly responsible for. When we talk about protection, we're talking about encasing things, right? But we're also talking about being strong enough to withstand certain forces. Okay, if you jump off of a table right here, unless you've got something wrong with your bones, osteoporosis or something similar to that, you're likely not going to break a bone if you jump from the table to there, to the floor, right? Our bones are strong. They help to protect us um, from outside forces, whether it be because they're protecting the organs or whether they're keeping our form straight and true. All right. Now, when we talk about um, how, how we get that movement out of our skeleton, we talk about different joints. Okay. We also talk about how muscles attach to different points in our body. So one of the things that, one of the tissues that we use is called a ligament. What is a ligament? Connects bones to each other. Okay. It's tough and it's fibrous and it attaches bone to bone. Okay. If that's bone to bone, then what is a tendon? Joins uh, muscles to bone. if necessary too because that's not really the end of the bone but there's cartilage in there to help protect that joint right so is that what they're replacing when you get a hip replacement because the cartilage is worn away mm -hmm. okay. is that the only place that we find cartilage no. uh -uh. where else do we find cartilage in our ears, in our nose. Can you think of anywhere else? Your ribs. You do have cartilage in your ribs, right? Okay. This spot, this this spot on our skeleton, when we were talking about our axial skeleton, this whole cavity is called what? Thorax. Thorax. It's called the thorax. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll stay there with the skeleton for now. Move you over here. I want 
want to make sure I didn't forget anything, so I'm looking through here. Okay, inside, inside your thorax, what vital organs are contained in here? Uh, the heart, the lungs, the esophagus, and vessels, like blood vessels. The great vessels. What are the great vessels that are in here? The aorta. The aorta. Um, the vena cava. The, and the two vena cava. What are our vena cava? Inferior. Inferior and superior. superior. Yep. All of those are contained here within the thorax. In between our lungs is an open space where our heart lives, right? What is that open space called? Pericardium. Pericardium is the sac that surrounds the heart. But inside, in here, where that sac or where that, the heart is at, there's a name for that space. Probably actually not in this part of your book. I'll bet it's in our cardiovascular section. But that space is called the mediastinum, or some people probably um, pronounce it as mediastinum. Okay, I like mediastinum, but it's on page one ninety-one. There you go. Six eighteen. Uh, you okay? Hmm? Yeah, you okay? Yeah. Okay. types of joints and we talked about them just a little bit. This one was the ball and socket and this one was a hinge joint. Okay, I don't think this can see me but this is a modified modified ball and socket, the wrist. Okay, modified ball and socket. Why is this considered a modified ball and socket? Because, they can do a bit of ball. because of the fact that the two bones, it, it rotates as well as yeah, all these bones here are rotating bones. They move all the way around. Okay, all right. Now, there. Okay, when you have, when you're using a hinge joint, when you're using a hinge joint and you have motion toward the midline, or the muscle is contracting, what's this called? Flexion. Flexion. And when your muscle is relaxing? Extension. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. When my bicep contracts, I've got flexion in my bicep. What's happening in my tricep? It's Extension. Which means it's doing what? Extension. Extension. Yeah. So muscles work opposite each other. doesn't matter where you're at in the body or what part of the body you're using. If you have a movement one way, a natural movement one way, Okay, if you have a movement one way, then you have a muscle on the opposite side to help correct that movement. Okay? That's one of the, I just think the human body is so cool. Don't you think? Don't you think? I think. All right. Ilium, ischium, pubis, femur, femoral head. Femoral head, which we learned, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, patella, tibia. Oh, let's talk about our pulse points in our tibia and our uh, dorsalis pedis, okay, while, we have a, while we're talking about our skeleton. The pulse point on, we have pulse points all over our body, okay. We talked about the radius a little bit ago. We talked about our temporal, right, we found our temporal here, okay. Where's your carotid pulse? Yeah, it's right here, right? On either side of your trachea, you can find your carotid pulse. Where are we going to find our brachial pulse? Inside the arm. You can find it up underneath the muscle, or if you pull your arm open far enough, you can feel the brachial pulse right here. Guess what? When you are checking blood pressure, this is where your stethoscope goes. It goes over this artery. Okay? Okay. If you find it there, if you find it there, then you know where to put the head of your stethoscope, the bell of your stethoscope. Did you find it? Yeah? Everybody found it on, on themselves? Okay, find a partner and find it on your partner. Okay, that's I know you can fail because it hurts. 
Did you not feel that? It's my car. Yep. Are you feeling today? <laughs> you feeling fine. I feel it. I can feel it pretty strong. Yeah. Do you have a pulse? <laughs> First time with a heart that hammers away like mine, you shouldn't have a problem finding it. <laughs> All good? Everybody found it? Vision panels, you know? I was hoping to make it over to Cool Ray. He's got some good, good arms. <laughs> okay, so we found our brachial pulse. That's where we're going to put our stethoscope when it's time to do our vital signs, right? Okay, where's our radio pulse at? We already talked about this. It's right, right here. His hand was upside down. Our radio pulse is right here. Okay? Fairly simple to find. Everybody should be able to find their own radio pulse. You should also be able to find it on your neighbor. Go ahead, find it on your neighbor. Boom, got it. <laughs> got it? Got it? Okay. Where's another place that we have a pulse point? In your groin. In your groin, in your femoral. I'm not going to make you find that on your neighbor. <laughs> Come here, Dusty. Darn it. Okay, how about your posterior tibial? Actually, let's start with popliteal. Where's your popliteal pulse? Behind the uh, knee. Behind the knee, yep. Inside? Pretty sure it's on the inside. It is. It's just... Right next oh, to your tendon. Yeah. Like, oh, right, right on the inside. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I got that. Can you find it? It's on the outside of that tendon right there. Yep. The outside. Like, or I guess the inside of your it's leg. Like directly underneath the metal. Next to your, yeah, if you put your fingertips up against the tendon, you should find it right about there. Do you find it? You might have too much muscle. I think, I think I do. It's you probably do my sweats. Both of you guys. Can you, or is it is the pulse generated from the inside or the outside of the muscle? Like if they're very muscular, can you? The, the artery actually is not in the muscle itself. The artery is outside of the muscle. It does. So is, yeah, is, I was just teasing him. It could be hard to find. Like if you have really strong biceps, it could be really hard to find. Like your brachial pulse because the biceps could be over it, so kind of. Yeah. yeah, if you have very well developed muscle. But the artery exists independent of the muscle. Well, doesn't a baby you check like center, right? Yep. Right there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, did you find your popliteal? Yes. Is that yeah? All right. Now, how about your posterior tibial? Behind your tibia. Behind your tibia. So where's that going to be? It's going to be on the inside, inside of your ankle and the very yep. back. Posterior tibialis is right here. Once you find your own, find your partner. I got boots on this stuff. It may be easier if you can take your socks off. Oh, I got mine right there. Do you have my socks on again? No, I actually have mine on today. You're going to have to take your shoe off anyway, because then we're going to go to Dorsalis Pedis. I don't want someone touching my feet. Right Suck it up. <gasps> That's weird. Oh, I found mine. Did you find it? Okay, now you're going to have to find his. You're going to have to touch his feet, too. What? Nope. I think I showered today. Did you find it? No. Oh, I'm not sure. Let me find it. I'm showing it somewhere in there. Do you see where my middle finger is at oh, right yeah. here? Yeah. yeah I feel pretty strong. Which finger there? This is kind of hidden a little bit behind. Okay. Do you feel it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Put your foot up there. Oh my gosh. Do I have to? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not taking my shoe. You know, you're being recorded. Yeah, it's okay. You're going to have to take your shoe off because the next one is for Salas Penis. But then I can take it off then. I don't know what's in there. Did you find it? He's tough. Can I have your foot? Oh, Maybe you don't have a pulse. Were we talking about your blood pressure being too high the other day? Why can we not feel your pulse? 
Your blood pressure is too high? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. You know what it is? I'm pushing too hard. I'm probably just closing it off. Can you take your shoe off? Sure can. I can find it. Alright, get over here. Come on, showboat. Well, yeah, you gotta know the makeup of it. I can massage this guy's feet many times. Oh, I don't wanna know. <laughs> also have a fast pulse. Not only is your blood pressure high, but you have a fast pulse. Do you see where my middle finger is right here on this foot? Yes. Okay, that's where his posterior tibial pulse is. It's directly underneath it. Gotcha. You know, is it really the, low? Like, it, it's not as bounding as I would have expected it to be for having a high blood pressure. But it's oh, yeah, moving really fast. Yeah. Because he has five people touching his feet. <laughs> What's this on your, is that one of those you're straps? All, you're all in dusty muscle. muscle. Yeah. yeah. My shoulder. All right. Personal space. Next, once you found the posterior tibial, we're going to find your dorsalis pedis pulse. How's that guy at? It's on the top of your foot. Uh, but where? Uh, usually, if you go between your first and second bone on the top of your foot, and you slide your finger over and down just a little bit, you'll find it. Might have to take your sock off, Beach. I got it. Find yours? Relatively strong. Mine's right here. This is going to be a horrible video. <laughs> so you can see on mine because I got a big ass vein, but there's a, there's a vein that goes back across the top of your foot. It should be right there. Did you find it, Corey? Did you find yours? No, will you help me? There's a big old vein right there. You're too low. Right here? Yeah. You got it? I was trying to feel it right there. I think my foot is dead. And right there is like too light, but I don't feel it there. My foot isn't dead. Oh, I feel it right there. Okay, right where my, right my fingers are at, right there. Don't push too hard because you're going to it. Right, maybe I'm feeling it. Can you feel it? No. See, we're going to get it. Oh, I can feel it. It's pretty feel soft. It? It's pretty soft, yeah. Here? Not here. quite like in between the bones. Down, like right here. It's like uh, smashing it <laughs> Oh, it's way up there. Yep. Uh, okay, that was wrong. Okay, you were in the right spot. Did you find it? I felt it before. It's like right between the two bones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's much did you find yours? I did. I was like pressing. It is pressing too hard? Yeah. Okay, Trey. You should have known better. It's so weird. You're going to be touching more than each other's feet, so. <laughs> I, might, I might have to consult with my wife. <laughs> this may be cheating. Does she know that you give foot massages? To Dusty, she doesn't care. She's actually upset that she doesn't get to be a part of the little rhythm. All right. Everyone found their own dorsalis pedis pulse? Yes. Everyone found their partner's dorsalis pedis pulse. Posterior tibial, popliteal, not femoral, obviously. Uh, radial, brachial, and carotid. Okay. Why do you think you need to know where all of those pulses are at? To check what the extremities. Extremities and stuff. So you're going to have a low pulse if there's a missing extremity. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no pulse in the missing extremity. No, like if it... <laughs> something if you go further south and you don't feel a pulse there then there's a possibility that the uh, the vein or artery or whatever mm -hmm. from the artery would be either pinched or cut or damaged okay and why 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 did we learn all of those pulse, pulse points why didn't I just teach you radial and posterior tibial because they get they get weaker right As they get weaker the further away you go from the heart Okay, so if you have a central pulse, what is your central pulse is considered? What is considered a central pulse? What locations? 
Carotid and Brachial. femoral. Yeah. Yep. Carotid and femoral, then you can assume that you have a systolic blood pressure of greater than 90. No, I'm sorry, that's greater than 50. Okay. As we move out to the peripheral pulses, If you have a brachial pulse and a popliteal pulse, you can assume that you have a systolic blood pressure of greater than 70. And your furthest away peripheral pulses, your radial and your posterior tibial, tibial or your dorsalis pedis, you can assume that you have a blood pressure, a systolic blood pressure of greater than 90. Why is it important to know that? This is way off topic for a skeletal system, but because we were doing skeletal and we were there. Why is it important to know this? If you're unable to get a blood pressure off someone. If you can't get a blood pressure off of someone, but you can find a pulse, then based on where you find that pulse at, you can make a good guess as to what their blood pressure is. What is that important? It? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Beach. Is there a name for the bottom one there? Well, this is still a peripheral pulse. Oh, it's just a peripheral. Yeah. One. What were the two pulses that you called out for 70? Uh, brachial and popliteal. And then radial and posterior tibial or dorsalis pedis. Okay. okay. Let's talk about... Let's talk about something else. Okay, go ahead and press pause again, or stop again.